Hi, this is Mark from Embedded Pro. I've seen lots of presentations at conferences and information online about ARM's latest M-Profile Core, the Cortex M33. That's the one featuring the Trust Zone security extension. So in this video series, I'm going to share with you what I've learned about the ARM V8M architecture and why you should use it in your IoT application. So, investigating ARM Cortex M33 Core and ARM Trust Zone for ARM V8M. Don't forget to share these videos with a friend, like them and subscribe to my channel. And you can make comments and suggest other topics for me to investigate down below. For video one, I ordered one of these evaluation kits from NXP. It's part number LPC55S69EVK. And on board is a microcontroller featuring dual Cortex M33 cores, one of which has the Trust Zone security extension. So first of all, let's unbox it and see what NXP provide. So the evaluation kit came in this glossy white box. On the back, we can see the shipping label and the packing information from NXP. And let's open up and see what we have inside. It's a black anti-static foam cover and underneath What's this? Okay, this is a jumper kind of indication. It's telling us what all the features of the board are and where the jumpers are. We might come to that a bit later. Inside, I can see a USB cable. Let's take this one out. What do we get? Okay, yeah, it's yet another micro USB cable. Thank you, NXP. Let's put that to one side. And in an anti-static bag is the evaluation kit. There's another bag. What's in here is a set of jumpers uh, to go on the headers on the board and nothing underneath that foam. Okay, so we'll close the box up and let's investigate the evaluation board piece of anti-static just to keep things safe and we're going to open the bag and find out what's inside static sensitive equipment inside and inside the bag is the evaluation kit so this is the LPC 55 S69 EVK lots of components on that side and underneath Mm, very little things under there. Okay, well I wonder if we can power it up and find out what happens. I know that there's a small demo that's been installed from the factory. So we'll power it up through the debugger USB connection. My PC's detected the connection. It's obviously installing a driver. And on the right hand side of the board I can see a blinking LED. That's just flashing about every second. So there's some software running on the board. And let's take a quick walk around. So first of all, here's the LPC 55S69. It's in a convenient LQFP package, so you can scope the pins if you need to. The microcontroller has dual Cortex-M33 cores, one of which has the Trust Zone extension. Also on board is a debugger chip. This is implementing the LPC Link 2 debugger and that's based on SIMSYS DAP technology. If you wanted to connect an external debugger to the board, there's a Samtech FTSH header. It's the standard five by two uh, way header and you could connect an external Sega J-Link or something. To the... Here's a USB micro connection uh, and that's the debugger interface for the board. There's another micro USB socket. Uh, this is labeled high speed and is giving you access to the USB peripheral on the microcontroller. Here's another micro USB connector and this is labeled full speed and is giving you access to the full speed USB peripheral on chip. There's a micro SD card socket and two 3.5 millimeter stereo jack plugs. The one on the left is labeled line in, the one on the right labeled audio line out. There's a three color LED and when the board powers up, you'll see that blinking with the demo application. There are four user buttons and these are labeled ISP, reset, 
user and wake up and they can be used to send signals to the GPIO of the microcontroller. You can see that there's a lot of GPIO brought out onto headers. So first of all, there are board headers mechanically compatible with the Arduino Duo standard. Inside that is board headers that are mechanically compatible to the micro bus format. And down here in the corner, these are compatible to the PMOD standard. And lastly, there are different ways to power the board. Uh, the board requires five volts, which can be provided either from the Arduino header from the debugger, which can provide five volts to the board, and also from a USB micro socket up in the top left-hand corner labeled five volt power only. So all in all, a very versatile board with a lot of IO and a lot of functionality. Let's try and power up the board and run the example project that comes preloaded. So I have my board powered through the P5 USB debug connector and the green LED is blinking at one hertz. And if I press the user buttons, we're actually lighting up another LED in a different color. So we see a green LED flash and then a different color flash. You don't see the effect very well in the video, but the LED is blinking in different colors. So I know that the board has an audio pass-through demo installed. It can take a signal from a mobile phone or a music player, sample it, and then output it through the line out connector. So I'm just plugging in my phone and a little speaker, a little USB powered speaker, and I'm gonna play some music that my son recorded on his guitar. So that's been played by my iPhone. It's being read into the microcontroller and back out of the audio out. Very simple demo. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope that you learned something. And if you did, well then please take the time to subscribe, to like the video and to share it with your friends. Thank you.